Now, Oppo launched its Reno family of smartphones to Europe just a few short months ago. In fact, the launch party was so recent that I think I'm still partly hungover from it. But despite this narrow time frame, Oppo is already pressing on with the Reno 2, a fully fledged sequel to the original handset. This new mobile is actually pretty similar to the original Reno in most respects, but it now comes packing a proper full on quad camera setup, more akin to the Reno 10x zoom model. Now, the Reno 2 is officially launching here in the UK as this video goes live. I've been using it as my full time personal handset for around a week now and here is my in-depth Oppo Reno 2 review and for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up of course it's not too surprising that the Reno 2 is an absolute titan just like basically every other Android that I've reviewed recently. At 6.5 inches it's quite the handful although not quite as hefty as the OnePlus 7T Pro and it's a bit more manageable than Oppo's previous Reno 10x zoom. Here in the UK you've got a choice of two colour schemes you've either got the luminous black or this here lighter ocean blue effort. I do really love that shiny reflective design which morphs from blue to purple as the glass curves towards the edges. Not only is it rather fetched, but the surface is surprisingly resistant to greasy prints and smudges, so you won't have to be constantly buffing the thing on your t-shirt. And reassuringly, the Reno 2 is one tough mother as well. You get Gorilla Glass 6 up front, Gorilla Glass 5 around back, and after a week of use and abuse, there are no scratches, scuffs, dents, chips, anything like that to speak of. It's still looking absolutely pristine. And of course, you've got that funky all dot nubbin sat there on the back, and that just helps to keep the majority of that back surface and off any table or desk when you rest the Reno 2 down just for a bit of added protection. Sadly, however, you don't get any dedicated water resistance, but aside from that, there's really no complaints here. Now, with the new OnePlus 7T series, you have to upgrade to the Pro model if you want a gorgeous, notch-free, full-view experience. But here on the Reno 2, you get that as standard thanks to that fantastic shark fin selfie cam. And that 6.5-inch AMOLED screen is exactly what you would expect, a crisp and colourful panel offering a full, perfectly good cinematic experience. The notch free finish and 20 by 9 aspect ratio are ideal for a spot of Netflix or your own preferred streaming service. It's super bright for comfortable outdoors use, while the blue light filter and night shield feature help to keep things easy on the eye in the evenings. And as it's an OLED screen, an always on display feature can be activated to help keep you clued in on any incoming notifications. Now on an audio tip, unfortunately the Reno 2 uses just a single downwards firing speaker for media. There's no stereo speaker setup. But I am inclined to forgive the Reno 2 because at least that speaker is reasonably powerful to be easily heard in a noisy environment and you do actually get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which has become increasingly rare in the mid to premium range of smartphones and there's full Dolby Atmos support as well so that's rather tasty. So Android Pie comes pre-packed here on the Reno 2 although Oppo insists it's working hard on an update to Android 10 and slathered on top of that is the Color OS 6.1 launcher. It's still an enjoyable UI that adds in shag loads of bonus features while retaining most of the best Android bits as well like a proper apps tray. I've done a full video tour of the best new Color OS 6 features, go check that out for a closer look at the software. And not much has really changed here on the Reno 2, it's still absolutely stuffed with great features such as full parental controls, some screen recording tools, far too much to even begin to list. Sure, the settings menu here is still rather messy, could definitely be laid out in a more friendly manner. And yes, the one-handed mode can only be activated via the navigations bar, which is really bloody tricky to pull down with just one hand. But apart from that, there's not really too much to complain about. And you also get full dual SIM support here on the Reno 2, or you can use that second slot for a micro SD memory card if you somehow run out of the 256 gigs of internal storage space. Let's have a shifty at the performance, and the Reno 2 is powered by a Snapdragon 730 G chipset backed by a generous 8 gigs of RAM. Now, this ain't as powerful as Qualcomm's premium 855 or 855 Plus platforms, but it is geared towards gamers thanks to an Adreno GPU overclocking boost. And you also get that smart game space app for boosting your stress relief in online murder sessions, as well as culling those pesky notifications and even recording the action for your posterity. I've actually done a full gaming test on this handset, so go check out that video for all you need to know about the performance of the Reno 2 and all of those tasty tools. And there's more good news if you do a lot of mobile gaming, because the Reno 2's battery life is at least on par with pretty much all of its rivals. You've got a mighty 4,000 milliamp cells stuffed away in there, and even at the end of a very, very intense day full of lots of Skype calls, media streaming etc etc I usually had at least 20% battery remaining if you are gaming non-stop on the likes of PUBG Mobile you'll get around six hours of non-stop play from a full charge 
If you play things a bit more conservative, the Reno 2 will survive a couple of days between charges. And while there's sadly no crazy good Super Vuk recharging on board, the 20 watt Vuk 3.0 tech means that you will get half a charge in just 30 minutes. And one of the most interesting parts of the Reno 2 and one of the biggest upgrades compared with the standard original Reno smartphone is that quad lens camera tech. You get a 48 megapixel primary lens backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 13 megapixel telephoto lens and then finally rounded off with a 2 megapixel depth sensor. You can switch between these lenses by tapping this here icon or simply pinching in and out on the main display. You get up to a 5 times hybrid zoom to get really close to your subject and the results are rather stunning. Definitely a strong rival to any other handset out there, although of course Huawei's P30 Pro does remain the zoom king. And you can digitally zoom up to the 20 times mark, although things are distinctly grainy once you hit that maximum level. My test photos look good when blasted up onto a telly, with plenty of fine detail on offer. In HDR situations, colours can appear a little bit washed out, but overall the results aren't bad, and it is rare to see any serious oversaturation. Colours are naturally reproduced, and if you want to give them a slight boost, you can toggle on Oppo's Dazzle colour feature. I won't quite say that it dazzles, but it does help to bring out those more vibrant hues. The auto mode on the Reno 2 really does falter in low light, but that's okay because there's a dedicated night mode to produce much brighter results, thankfully without blowing out those lighter elements. And you also have a dedicated portrait mode which is quite subdued compared with many rivals and it doesn't really offer much in the way of customization beyond the selection of filters. But the edge detection is on point and it's definitely still worth using. And you also have a macro mode that uses that wide angle lens to capture tiny subjects up close. Switch to the video mode and you can capture up to 4K resolution footage, although you'll need to stick to Full HD if you want to make use of the wide angle lens as well as the other two. At Ultra HD level, my test footage looks really good. Colours are boosted beyond their natural appearance, but the detail levels are nice and crisp, and even the image stabilisation does a pretty good job of keeping things smooth while you're walking about the place. And if you're really moving at pace, there's even a proper ultra steady mode, which is just as good as the OnePlus effort. As for your selfies, well, that 16 megapixel shark fin camera will pop up when needed, and it's pretty damn reliable as well. You can grab some sharp, detailed pics with decent HDR smarts when needed, and you get full portrait mode support as usual. And using that front facing camera, you can shoot up to 1080p full HD video as well, which is a pretty good job of picking up audio and uh, fairly respectable when it comes to the HDR smarts as well. So that's what I think of the Oppo Reno 2 and the big question is would I actually recommend it? Well it's definitely an improvement on the original despite coming just a few months later. You get stronger performance and battery life than the first Reno phone with a feature packed camera similar to the 10 times zoom model. The thing is if the Reno 2 had launched here in the UK and Europe about a month ago I'd say yeah it's pretty solid value for money but unfortunately it's come just after the arrival of the OnePlus 7T which may spot a little notch up top but it does have a 90 hertz screen which is absolutely stunning and of course it's got the latest Snapdragon 855 plus chipset as well. And then of course you've got rivals like the Nubia Z20 as well again packing those really premium specs for a similar sort of price. I've got a full unboxing of that live right now so go check that out if you haven't seen it before. It's got a dual screen design which is absolutely bonkers but again great considering those fantastic specs. So what do you think? Are you tempted by the Reno 2 despite these strong rivals hitting the, uh, the UK market right now? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts and please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell down below for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you!